where do i begin with london i remember when i was trying to move into the uk and i knew that i was coming to london i literally went on the internet and searched for the cost of living in london because like you guys know london is pretty expensive and it is like the capital of england so it's a given it has to be one of the most expensive places to live in england and as a matter of fact london is actually one of the most expensive places to live in the world if i'm being honest but the beauty of london is that it is like a melting pot of different cultures and people and everything and it's just so bubbly and lively if you know lagos london is like lagos but more expensive <laughs> but yeah anyways in this video i'm going to be sharing how much it costs for you to live in london or how much it costs generally how much i spend living in london and how much you can expect to spend if you are thinking about moving to london now if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in then please keep on watching if it's your first time stopping by hi my name is oinko and i'd love to have you over here so please do all to hit that subscribe button down below if you end up enjoying this video and share this video with everyone who cares to watch it and without further ado let's jump right into the video now the first thing i'm going to be talking about is rent and the truth of the matter really is that rent ends up being about half of your income if not slightly more depending on your income and your circumstances when i was moving to london i did what most people would do which is go on websites such as spare room gumtree um right move and i just searched for a lot of accommodations now blanket statement if you are moving to london it is by far cheaper to stay in a shared accommodation but you, as you guys know i cannot stay in a shared accommodation because i am married and it just doesn't work out for me one because i need my personal space as much as possible and two because not many places actually let couples come into their shared accommodation so if you're single and you don't really mind staying in a shared accommodation then that would definitely be a good place for you to start it definitely takes your accommodation costs way 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 lower and it just helps you save more money on all fronts now again if there are many people in the accommodation that you're staying in it's going to be way cheaper as opposed to maybe there are just two people in the accommodation so if it's like an eight-man house it's going to be cheaper than a two-man house and then another factor to consider would be is my um flat like and um, suites or do i have to share a bathroom and toilet with someone else that also would affect the price of your place so on here i have this beautiful room from spareroom.com it's an ensuite room and it's just two rooms really so there will just be two of you in the house and because it's literally just two people it is 895 pounds per month but this is with all bills included and it is somewhere in Lewisham. it looks good it definitely is a better arrangement than spending 1200 pounds per month if you don't mind sharing your space but since it's ensuite you don't have to share your bathroom and that is a very huge plus just to show you how versatile spare accommodation can be we have here this room for 450 pounds per month and that is with all bills included but it's a much smaller space and you can see that it's not as visually appealing as the other place that we looked at earlier and again it's all bills included now let's look at the more pricey parts of london now here we have this gorgeous gorgeous flat to rent in mayfair you can see that it is so beautiful can you see how spacious it is like literally and it is in west london which is like one of the more pricey parts of london and you can see that it says this is 764 pounds per week which takes the monthly rent to around 3000 pounds per month and this is a one bedroom flat for 3000 pounds per month now again i went on spare room and i found a studio apartment and my studio apartment literally is a studio which contains a bed a tv kitchenette area toilet and bathroom all in the same space and it is all bills included so for this studio apartment i am paying for the rent and the bills which include council tax electricity water 
and internet so i'm not paying any other bills except these bills and i'm paying a whopping 1200 pounds per month for this accommodation now if you think about it it's pretty expensive especially considering what 1200 pounds can get you if you moved just one to two hours outside london next thing that i would typically spend money on is my phone bill and my phone bill at the moment is 18 pounds per month and i pay 400 gig of internet and unlimited um, calls and texts now that i'm thinking about it in retrospect i probably shouldn't have done that because truth of the matter is i rarely ever use my mobile data i'm almost always using wi-fi at work i have wi-fi at home i have wi-fi so it's literally just when i'm in transit or when i'm commuting that i use my phone internet so i don't need that much internet Maybe I should have gone for something cheaper. It would have definitely helped with my phone bills and made it significantly cheaper. Okay, after the phone bills comes food because you guys know that your girl likes to eat. And if you follow me on my Instagram, you would have seen me cook a few Nigerian food. The beauty about living in London, like I said, is a pot of a very hot pot of melting cultures. So you can find literally anything you want and everything you want from different parts of the world. You don't have to try too hard to find it. If you want to find it, all you have to do is quite literally just look for it and you find it. It's not that difficult, but because of how available it is, it comes at a premium. So I like to eat Nigerian food every once in a while because again, if you watch my culture shock video about living in London, you would see that my opinion about British food is that it is quite bland and it's just, it's not compatible with my Nigerian taste buds, if you know what I mean. So I like to eat my nigerian food every once in a while and i find that i spend around 200 to 300 pounds a month on feeding and 200 is being very conservative if i'm not going to be eating nigerian food a lot but if i'm going to be eating nigerian food as my yam my soups all of that and then cook heavy nigerian food to make me feel good and feel at home then i'm leaning more towards 300 pounds per month on food and that's not just for me that's for me and my husband because obviously we're two people so that's how much it works out to be for the two of us per month so 300 pounds per month is pretty steep if i'm being honest but and if you are not particular about eating nigerian food and you don't mind eating british food then i can promise you that you can get away with spending a hundred pounds a month on food because british food is really really cheap i mean what do they eat bread cheese milk not i mean potatoes it's pretty cheap and it's readily available but yeah that's how much i spend on food you guys know me i like to restaurant hop if you are on my instagram then you would have seen me eating out a couple times i like to restaurant hop and eating out in this country is very expensive i thought eating out was expensive when i was in nigeria but i find that eating out in london is even more expensive because at least with nigeria you get a very nice ambience the ambience in many restaurants in the in london that i've been to is not that sexy for that for the prices of the food to be that high if i'm being honest so i mean and every once in a while i'm also lazy and i don't feel like cooking so i also order uber eats i'm not proud of this but it's the reality i order uber eats and i find that on an average i spend about 20 pounds per every time i order uber eats it's so frustrating now that i'm thinking about it because it adds up it adds up it adds up if you order uber eats five times a month at 20 pounds ready spent 100 pounds and that can happen very very easily i'm not kidding you very easily can happen if you go to starbucks to have a sandwich or you go to costa to have a sandwich when you're at work and you spend five pounds every day on that it adds up so i mean eating out sadly is around 150 pounds per month for me i'm not proud of this i'm not proud of this and i really have to cut it down because i'm not trying to be giving all these food vendors my hard and money do you know what i mean it's too expensive so no if you want to also drink out 
it costs a whopping premium it's expensive so the best thing for you to do really if you want to hang out is just to buy your food buy your drink come to your house cook it put on your tv and watch netflix because if you think you want to go to the cinema a cinema ticket is expensive costs around 20 pounds per person and that's going to be including your drink and popcorn so if you if you do if you just buy your food and come to your house and cook it it's cheaper and everybody is happy do you know what i mean so that's how much i spend on eating out 150 pounds then transportation i typically have a travel card and i usually buy is when i buy my travel card i buy a zone 2 to zone 6 travel card and that costs 184 pounds 80 pence is pretty expensive and that travel card really covers for um rail travel overground and underground rail travel bus travel and you know it just makes your life pretty much more convenient if you want to travel cheaper you can travel via um bus and the bus is one pound 65 pence each way so you know that in a day you're going to be spending around three pounds 20 thereabouts for transport as opposed to going with the train if you go with the train if you are going to set um if you're traveling off peak period it's about two pounds 60 each way and if you do that two times and then you still have to take the bus it takes your transport cost to around eight pounds as opposed to around three pound 20 do you know what i mean so if you don't want to use a travel card you can definitely opt to travel by bus but that would definitely mean that you have to plan your journey way ahead of time because the bus schedules are a bit not as quick as traveling by train if you know what i mean so that's how much i spend on on transportation in a month i also have some little things here and there and these are very doctor specific bills um, my indemnity as a doctor practicing in the uk you have to have indemnity and indemnity is like a, an insurance cover for you just in case god forbid you mess up at least you don't have to pay legal fees from your pockets because we all know that legal fees are pretty expensive so the indemnity is definitely like a cover for you it's compulsory for all doctors working in the uk some people practice without indemnity but it's actually wrong and you can you know get into trouble if the gmc finds out that you're practicing without indemnity my indemnity is with mps and it costs 75 um 17 i believe 77 pounds per annum i just literally looked searched across different indemnity providers got a quote from all of them and went with the cheapest to be honest that's what i did because i got a quote from somebody that was telling me 700 and something pounds per annum i got a quote from another person telling me 120 something pounds per annum and then these guys i went with told me 75 77 pounds per annum and i just decided to go with them because i don't envisage that i'll be getting into any trouble but that is how much i pay per annum and that takes my um, indemnity costs around six pounds fifty per month if you do that like as a monthly cost then also gmc registration because everybody has to be registered with gmc and gmc registration costs a whopping 420 pounds per annum and it is compulsory if you want to practice in the uk as a doctor you definitely have to be registered with the general medical council and that takes my monthly um bills for towards gmc registration to around 35 pounds per month also subscriptions now what i personally do is because i am still my my google account is in nigeria i literally pay for my subscriptions in naira because i find that it is so much cheaper so i'm not going to include that in this bill it's cheaper than paying for youtube premium here because youtube premium here is almost 10 pounds and i pay about 1000 naira there about for youtube premium per month in nigeria so it's a world of difference i also pay for um my kind master which is my video editing app in naira because again it's cheaper i just pay for all my subscriptions in naira i'm not saying this but if you have a nigerian account and you have a nigerian address and you have a nigerian card please just pay for your subscriptions in naira it's so much more cheaper than paying for it in the great british pounds um 
NHS. I know that everyone likes to say NHS is free healthcare and I'm still struggling to see how the NHS is free healthcare because you pay national insurance every month from your salary but that money never it doesn't come to you so you never actually feel like it's a deduction because it was never yours in the first place. So you pay that amount of money from your salary and every time you have to collect a prescription you also pay for the prescription. What some people do is that they do like a subscription for prescription especially if you're on um, routine medication let's say you're hypertensive or diabetic and you know that you're going to be collecting prescription meds every month some people do a subscription it definitely is cheaper than paying for your prescription per item because nine pounds 35 pence is quite a bit of money although some people are exempt from prescription so children under the age of 16 i believe are exempt pregnant women are exempt people over the age of 60 are exempt there are some exemption criteria definitely for prescription but across board you have to pay for your prescription and again i know that people like to say that nhs is free healthcare but if you need to get like a dental appointment or something you have to pay for that as well and it's not free <laughs> so yeah now Sometimes you want to buy clothes, sometimes you think that you want to, you know, miscellaneous things happen, you don't really plan for it, sometimes just miscellaneous and I put my miscellaneous fee for the month at 200 pounds per, per month. So this could include sometimes when I'm shopping, if I have to buy a new outfit, maybe I have to attend a wedding or something that would come out of miscellaneous or if I have to hang out with a friend that I didn't budget for before I mean and I definitely need to have this hangout it will come out of miscellaneous so I mean I put my miscellaneous at 200 pounds per month I think that is basically an overview of how much it costs to live in London so guys the total amount of money that you can spend thereabouts if you live a life similar to mine would be 1944 pounds 30 pence per month is pretty expensive pretty steep and i'm really trying to bring that down a lot because it's expensive if i'm being honest it's expensive especially because the mean income in london is around 40,000 pounds per annum pre-tax and after tax that takes it to about 2,600 pounds per month so it's pretty expensive now if you want to move to the UK these are the things that you should consider so that you know how much is going to be available for you to move to savings investments and all of that that is what literally makes a good salary at the end of the day i hope you guys found this video helpful thank you guys so much for watching i know that this video has been a lot of information but i hope that it's been really helpful to you thank you guys so much for watching i really do hope you enjoyed this video and i will catch you guys in my next one bye guys